Section 10.3, cubic spline interpolation. A curve that passes through a set of points in the plane is said to interpolate those points, and the curve is called an interpolating curve for those points. So for example, if I have a bunch of points like this in the plane, and I want a curve that passes through each of those points smoothly, then I could draw one sort of like that. And if I had better drawing skills, it'd be even smoother. But the idea here is that we want something that smoothly passes through all those points and that we can get that by taking um, the different sections between the points and coming up with some cubic equation. So like for this SX, it's going to be our spline by this theorem. For each of these intervals, x1, y1, x2, y2, uh, etc. through these points, we have a different chunk of this SX curve given by some cubic polynomial. The reason it's cubic is because the fourth derivative has to be zero for reasons beyond the scope of the section. But by taking each of these pieces um, carefully, we can make sure that they smoothly transition into the next cubic and then put them all together and get one uh, cubic spline. So by the theorem that we have, we can see that given n points, x1, y1, x2, y2, etc., with xi plus 1 minus xi equal to h, so h is the difference between the x values, through uh, i from 1 to n minus 1, our cubic spline is given by some a1 times x minus x1, some b1 times x1 minus x2, oh, uh, the first one's cubed, then squared, and so on. And we do that for each of our intervals from x1 to x2, x2 to x3, and so on, all the way through xn. And the coefficients are what's important here, and they are given by mi plus 1 minus mi over 6h for ai, bi's are given by mi over 2, and the ci's are given by yi plus 1 minus yi over h minus mi plus 1 plus 2mih divided by 6 the di is just yi. The mi's are the uh, second derivative of the spline at xi. So as we can see, the coefficients are determined in basically entirely by these m's that come in here, the second derivative that pops up. So in order to come up with a unique cubic spline, we have to come up with some restrictions on the m's. And that way we can actually um, calculate something here. So here's a couple of um, standard restrictions, but these are not the only ones. The first one gives us the natural spline if we take m1 equal to 0 and mn equal to 0. So the second derivative of the spline is 0 at the endpoints. That gives us a matrix of coefficients over here times the m's that we can set equal to 6 over h squared times these uh, rows of um, y's. Uh, notice for each of them we have the exact same uh, equality for the matrix because of our definition. It's just kind of uh, the restriction changes the coefficients that are going to use to multiply the m's. So for our, so that was the natural spline. The other spline we could talk about is the parabolic runout spline. That spline reduces to a parabolic curve on the first and last intervals. So we set m1 equal to m2, and we set the last one mn equal to the previous one, mn minus 1. Gives us a slightly different matrix. It just has um, fives instead of uh, fours at the corners. And then the cubic runout spline is the spline that is a single cubic curve on the first two and last two intervals. So m1 is 2m minus 2 minus m3, and mn is 2m minus 1 minus mn minus 2. And it just changes the matrix and puts a 6 over there. So let's uh, do an example. We'll find a cubic spline. The density of water is well known to reach a maximum at a temperature slightly above freezing. Table 2 from the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, CRC Press 2009, gives the density of water in grams per cubic centimeter for five equally spaced temperatures from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Let's interpolate these five temperature density measurements with a parabolic runout spline and find the maximum density of water in this range by finding the maximum value on this cubic spline. So first, let's uh, list our x values. 
So we have that uh, x1 is negative 10. Uh, that gives us a y1 of 0.99815. Our x2 will be 0, giving us a y2 of 0.99987. Then x3 is 10. y3 is 0.99. 973, x4 is 20, y4 is 0.99823, x5 is 30, and y5 is 0.99567. So going back to our table, we need a parabolic Reynolds prime as our second one. Let's write out this matrix over here. So we have six times y1 minus two y2 plus y3 divided by h squared. That should equal, if we do our calculations with our y's, uh, negative point zero 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 one 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 six okay let's do the same thing for the next one with uh, y2 where we started y2 so it's y2 minus 2 y3 plus y4 divided by h squared remember h is the, the distance between the x values so that's negative point zero 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 uh, one more zero eight one six and then let's do 6 times y3 minus 2y4 plus y5. And then we're out of y values, so that's good. Divide by h squared, and we get uh, negative 0 0.00061. So this allows us to set up an equation where we have 5 uh, for 5 for the parabolic All right we're setting up uh, this right over here and 1 0 1 1 0 1 okay good so we'll take this matrix and we'll multiply that by m2 m3 m4 and set it equal to the values that we just computed, negative 0 0.0001116, negative 0 0.0008116, and negative 0 0.0006336. So then we can uh, solve this matrix Use, I'll use a calculator and get m2 is equal to negative 0 0.00001973. m3 is equal to negative 0 0.001293. And m4 is negative 0 0.00001013. Then, because this is parabolic, we have m1 equal to m2, so that's going to give us m1 equal to point, negative point zero 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 one nine seven three, and m5 has to be equal to m4, so that's negative point zero 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 one zero one three. So now we have all our m's. We can write out the spline. Sx. So let's do that. So we have Sx is equal to, uh, let's see, I need to skip the cube for the first one. So it's negative point zero zero uh, five zeros nine eight seven 
x plus 10 squared when we compute the uh, b coefficient and then 0 0.000 x plus 10 plus 0.99815 and that's for the x values that are uh, between negative 10 and 0. Okay, now let's do the ones from 0 to 10. So that'll give us 0.000. I uh, need three more zeros. 113 times x minus 0 cubed minus 0.000. Zero, zero, 987 x minus 0 squared plus 0 0.000 0, zero, zero, 0733 times x minus 0 plus 0.99987 uh, that gets us from 0 to 10 so then we have point zero 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 um, three more zeros four seven times x minus ten and then we will cube that subtract point zero 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 six four seven times x minus ten squared minus point zero 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 nine zero zero times x minus ten plus point nine 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 seven three okay that's for between ten and uh, twenty okay one more we we'll just have to go uh, with a will be zero in this case so I have negative um, Point zero 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 five zero seven times x minus twenty squared minus point zero zero two zero five three times x minus twenty plus point nine nine eight two three and that gets us between twenty and thirty. Okay, so that is going to be our sx, our cubic spline. If we take the um, derivative, s prime of x, then that would be point zero 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 uh, zero 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 three three nine x squared minus point zero 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 one nine seven x plus point zero 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 seven three three or just two threes for um x uh between zero to ten consider that equal to zero and see that we get x equals three point nine nine for the interval between 0 to 10. So that's when the first derivative is 0. So that means that s of 3.99 would be equal to 1.00001 grams per cubic centimeter as a maximum value at 3.99 degrees Celsius, which kind of makes sense because it's very, very close to 1.00000 grams, which was our standard of measurement. We could even take a quick look at the graph for a cubic spline. Let's see, It'd be something like this, put uh, 0, negative 10, 10, 20, 30, this is our x-axis, and we'll put uh, 
and 1.000 and something like that and then by plotting our points let's see let's say that one's at negative 10 and then this one gets close to 1.0 at zero but not quite goes down a little bit and then keeps going down All right, roughly something like that. So then our spline goes through these points smoothly like that. And we could see that the maximum is probably roughly around over here. It should actually go up maybe a little bit. Maybe I could draw that a little bit better. There we go. And yeah, you could see that it almost hits one right around 3.99 that could actually motivate you to check the interval from 0 to 10 when taking your derivative so that you don't uh, take the derivative of each of these, you know, because I basically magically took this one from 0 to 10 just, you know, because I already knew it was going to be over there. But in any case, this is how we can um, find this uh, maximum value using our cubic spline. It's kind of cool.